LGBTQ Pride Month is celebrated every June to coincide with the anniversary of the uprising at the Stonewall Inn in New York City. 2019 marks 50 years since that clash between police and the patrons, which many see as the event that brought the fight for gay rights to the forefront to mainstream awareness. Here with perspective is Lee Williams from the People of Color Against AIDS Network and Isis Hanan from Pride Foundation. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. Thank we you very much having. appreciate it. So for people who might not know what happened at Stonewall, can you explain and also the significance? Well, would you want to? Yeah, it's, it's people were tired of being policed, right? Being discriminated against by, by police and people rose up. They were tired of that discrimination. What was happening at Stonewall? It was a place, it was um, Stonewall Inn, a bar where folks could find community and be themselves. Right. And one of the only few places, right, where people could go to, to be the, with the community that um, loves them and cares for them and identifies. And so what was the sort of policing that was happening there that people objected to? Right, so a lot of people, especially with Stonewall, it was a place where a lot of marginalized folks within the LGBT community mm -hmm. were able to go. Um, the police and be safe, were, and be safe right? Because even for a lot of trans folks in particular, and trans folks of color, and LGBT folks of color, they weren't accepted in a lot of other gay bars as well. So that's also a significance of Stonewall at that time. Um, the LGBT community, particularly gay folks and trans folks, were policed in a way where if you're wearing certain articles of clothing that didn't match what society says, like women should always mm -hmm. wear bras and panties if you were wearing something different, then the police would. Um, give you a ticket for wearing an article of clothing from the opposite gender and things like that. And so the night of Stonewall, as Isis mentioned, the patrons were, they were over it, of the police brutality that they were facing, of the harassment, the police would often raid bars. And uh, that night, folks said, finally, no more. And once again, as I mentioned, it was a lot of the folks on the margins. And unfortunately, today, what we see is not that representation as mm -hmm. we celebrate 50 years. And, and this is important because we are still kind of, you know, fighting our way along for human rights, but not everybody is going at the same speed, right? Exactly. exactly. And so we need to be aware of this. Um, so last week, the, the New York Police Department apologized for what happened at Stonewall. And, you know, I don't want to say that's not nothing because, you know, it matters, but also it's 50 years later. How, what is your reaction to <laughs> right. this? It's uh, 50 years a little too late, right? People are still being harassed by police. People are still Definitely. being harassed by police within detention centers, whether it's in prisons, which is heavily gendered, right? Exactly. And people are still policed on, uh, in public spaces for being who they are, especially um, trans people of color, trans women of color. Well, and I think this is something that we need to understand, that this term intersectionality, this idea that there are several ways in which you are um, the uh, the person who might be the target of discrimination is something that I think is hard for people who have the privilege of not having that happen to them, mm -hmm. don't always understand. Can you talk to me a little bit more about that? Sure, I mean, when we look at, well, one, with this 50 year later apology, even folks in the community there were like, no, it's a, you know, as I since mentioned, it's a little 50 years too late. Yeah. Um, but can it be seen as an acknowledgement that it was wrong and that that's I, yeah, a good thing? I, yeah, I definitely think so. And I also think, you know, 50 years after Stonewall, clearly there is progress, right? We're here today. This is a, we're a living right. and walking example of that progress. But a lot of folks have been left behind at the expense of folks who have the most uh, privileges within our community, particularly a lot of cisgender white gay men, mm -hmm. and a lot of folks of color have been left behind. Lesbians have been left mm -hmm. behind. Trans people have been left behind. Uh, just this year alone, 12 trans women of color have been murdered, and there should be outrage. A couple of days ago, uh, recently folks have been talking about what happened at Pulse and that atrocity. Mm -hmm. But we should also be talking about 50 years after Stonewall, which was started by trans folks of color, tra yeah. primarily trans women of color, everyone, that should be on the lips of everyone within our community today. It should be a priority and it's not. And our so broader bitter, community, because we're a better place situation. when we all have a seat at the table, right? Exactly. So, exactly. you know, there is an investment that, that, in my opinion, ought to be made by all of us, regardless mm -hmm. of where we fit on the spectrum of anything. We're all just right. human beings. Um, Isis, how do you talk about this to people who may have never experienced anything of this sort 
about why it's important and about the level of difficulty that people have from being in public to you know, getting medical services to accessing housing or jobs, all of that is involved, correct? The way I talk about it in some of my work is around media and messaging is that the binary, the gender binary, which is male and female, affects us all regardless of whether you're trans or not, right? Absolutely. And yes, we've made progress, as Lee has said, over the past 50 years. We live in a state where there's non-discrimination protections in place since 2006. But legislation doesn't keep us safe unless we shift culture, mm -hmm. unless the people who don't agree with with our identities or who don't have the same ideals um, don't, um, if we're not changing their, their hearts and minds, right? How do you do that? Um, through education and through sharing stories and through uh, having honest and open conversations around um, around the, the identities that we hold. So celebrating Pride and having this month to kind of you know dig into this and there's been this controversy over whether embassies can fly mm -hmm. the pride flag on the same pole that that normally flies the american flag so there's you know there's all kinds of stuff coursing through as we as we get mm -hmm. through pride month what is this experience like for you at this point do you feel like we're getting somewhere or is it that i ha i constantly have this feeling of going <laughs> forward and going backwards well, at the same time I, I think i think you're right right we take we take some steps forward and then we also take some steps back i think that a lot of it's similar in the sense with second wave feminism right so you had a lot with second wave liberal feminism in particular a lot of folks putting this emphasis on a lot of things that were symbolic that would really privilege those who have access to certain things right so a lot of white women with money, <laughs> you know, got reaped a lot of benefits yeah. in terms of the structural changes that were made, but they were only made for that specific population. So we just came off over a decade talking about marriage equality, which is great, mm -hmm. but if you're poor, you probably don't want to get married, right? And we didn't necessarily talk about how that impacted trans couples, but meanwhile, we have this epidemic with HIV, we have this epidemic with these deaths of trans women of color, yeah. We have a situation where most LGBT people are poor. So a lot of the issues that are impacting us on our day-to-day -day life aren't being addressed oftentimes at the expense of talking about some of these symbolic things. Like right. the flag is great at the embassy. I think that symbolizes a lot of things, but the day-to-day -day struggles of LGBT people, we need to kind of get back to the basics. Right. And that's what Stonewall was about. Those people were marginalized. Mm -hmm. Right? These so are the it's people. It's about your physical safety right, and your ability right. to take and the, care of yourself. And the folks that had made that rebellion happen were the folks who were at the margins, not only within the general society, but also at the margins within the LGBT community. And so a lot of folks are riding off of that and still keeping those folks at the bottom. That's such an important point. Thank you so mm -hmm. much for bringing that to our attention. Um, we appreciate you both. Hope you'll come back another time and we'll continue to talk. Thank you so much.